Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another episode of Ask Fish the First in this new studio space. You guys have questions on Discord, link to join that in the description if you've got one for a future episode. In the meantime, destroy the crap out of that like button. Let's get into it. Jacob English says, I can't wait for new Epiphone models. I want to know what pickups are coming in the Jerry Cantrell Les Paul. Well, you're in luck. And thanks to Josh Higgins McKinnon for hitting me up on Instagram about this. So it looks like Jerry Cantrell's Epiphone Wino that we learned about a few months ago is finally nearing release. There were leaked listings on European retailer Musiker that have since been removed, but before they left, they gave us a few more details to add to what we already knew before. Pricing indicates it'll line up with Epiphone's standard artist pricing, which is $8.99 these days, same as the Slash Collection models. Inflation, lol. Essentially, the Wino will be an affordable version of the $10,000 whatever aged Murphy Lab version from last year. It'll be a wine red Les Paul Custom, proper ebony fingerboard and everything. No Gibson 490R, 498T pickups like in the Murphy Lab, but it does have an exclusive covered Epiphone Classic Pro and uncovered 98T Pro humbucker combo. The Classic Pro is already offered in the Inspired by Gibson Les Paul Classic, but the 98T? That's new. The 498T is supposed to be Gibson's hot modern take on the PAF. It'll be interesting to see how the import version compares. Side note, it's really odd though, right? Pickups are very, very simple technology. Wind a coil around a magnet. It really shouldn't be that hard to at least get in the ballpark, but I've always found Epiphone humbuckers so much less defined than Gibson's, or even less defined than similar import pickups. I just don't know what's up with them. But I have high hopes for the 98T, especially given it's uncovered. There are a lot of bullshit guitar myths out there, but one that is not bullshit is that an uncovered pickup is brighter than a covered one, which makes it great for high gain rhythms and an awesome pairing with a covered neck pickup that has a creamier sound. Disappointingly, while the Murphy Lab version had a Fishman Powerbridge piezo system, that is nowhere to be found on the Epiphone version. I'd hoped that because of the Lifeson, piezo systems would start showing up on more Epiphone models, but nah, didn't make the cut. The Epi Wino also has a Jerry Cantrell custom slim taper neck shape, whatever that means. Generally, I find these custom Gibson and Epiphone neck shapes don't tend to be too dissimilar to regular rounded or slim taper necks. I mean, makes sense given the guitars they're based on. That's why I think the Adam Jones models are gonna be really interesting, the Gibson USA version, but specifically the Epiphone version. Epiphone deals in huge volumes. So for just one specialty model, are they going to actually use a special 70s neck? Which is really unique as far as Gibson necks go. It's really thin. It's almost an ESP thin U shape. And it's fucking awesome. That's why I bought three New Orleans. Or are they just going to repurpose a standard slim taper. Stay tuned to this space because I definitely plan on finding out. But for the Cantrell, it basically seems like the standard Epiphone Les Paul Custom, this time in wine red and has Jerry Cantrell on the truss rod cover, back of the headstock. There's the new bridge pickup and also a custom hard case, so that helps offset the $170 price difference from the normal version. But really the main selling point for this one is it's a wine red Les Paul Custom with a proper Ebony board, first time Epiphone's done that. I almost bought a wine red Les Paul Custom back in the day. I was ready to sell my soul for that guitar. There was just the slight issue of having no money. But I just love that color. I might have to cop one for a review as a business expense. So that's the why no. The bigger news though is that there seems to be an additional Epiphone Jerry Cantrell signature that will be dropping at about the same time the Epiphone Jerry Cantrell Les Paul Prophecy. Wait, what? So you may remember the Prophecy series, it's actually really cool. Now in its third generation, it's Epiphone's most modern guitar line. Most recently, they've dropped with bright black burst finishes, Grover locking tuners, brush chrome hardware, and proprietary Fishman Fluence pickups with exclusive Gibson pickup voices. Up until now though, the signatures in the Prophecy series they've been their own separate things. Even when you had modern metal Epiphones, the Hayfee signatures, Bjorn Galat's Jotun, they were just 
that modern metal signatures not prophecies but it seems like epiphone's now treating them like chris rock and open palm slap them together in a new jerry cantrell bone white les paul custom prophecy that joke is definitely a dated reference by now but listen i just had a baby i haven't had time to meme it up on the internet with the rest of you let me have this one so the cantrell shares a lot of the same specs as the regular les paul prophecy 24 jumbo frets ebony fingerboard Fishman Fluence pickups, brush chrome hardware. And I gotta say, I love how clean looking it is. Like a white Les Paul Custom with brush chrome hardware. Yes, especially with those new minimalist inlays. So obviously looks different to the mainline prophecies and it also has the same Jerry Cantrell custom slim taper neck as on the wino how different will it be to epiphone's normal d-shaped slim taper we'll see so it's definitely cool and i'm excited for the possibilities this opens up for prophecy collaborations with other artists like i think a matt hafey prophecy makes a ton of sense like a futuristic maybe that's the wrong word modern counterpart to his upcoming origins or maybe a kirk hammett prophecy with emgs james hetfield maybe yeah so like an iron cross prophecy epiphone f make that happen even a chad kroger seven string explorer prophecy i'd be down nickelback slaps i will not hear otherwise but this a jerry cantrell prophecy I would not have called this in a million years. I know he's a Les Paul Custom player. He's been known for playing a white Les Paul Custom that he used all over Degradation Trip that he drew black dots all over. All over, all over, all over. Funny story about that guitar, the headstock actually broke while he was composing songs on it. Classic Les Paul move. But he never had it fixed until he absolutely had to because they were going on tour. His blue Les Paul Custom is also really well known. That would have been my guess for another Jerry Cantrell signature, the Wino, but in blue. A Jerry Cantrell prophecy, though? That's <laughs> super random. He is a Fishman artist, but he's not really a Fishman fluence or even an active pickup player, I think. I'm not saying you can't try new things. I strongly encourage trying everything. But it doesn't seem like the most natural fit for the launch of the first artist signature prophecy. And I mean, it's a really cool guitar it just to me it doesn't scream jerry cantrell it seems more modern metalcore than grunge and the rumored 1100 dollars is a little steep especially when fans of the modern les pauls have the regular prophecy and jerry cantrell fans have the wino which are both 300 bucks less so my thoughts on this one are kind of similar to my thoughts on that new halle berry movie moonfall weird one Glad it exists though, because I'm excited to see where it leads to with more artist signatures. I'd love to see Epiphone bring in more signatures for modern metal players through the Prophecy series now that they're open to tweaking that particular formula. Like go toe to toe with LTD to bring young metal acts in, especially if they add stainless steel frets. This opens up a lot of possibilities if they want it to. Anyways. These are just some of my thoughts. Here's where I'll throw it to you. What do you think of the new Jerry Cantrell models? And what do you think about signature prophecies? Who else do you think should get one? Any and all thoughts, let me know in the comments down below. Speaking of getting one, though, I guess, <laughs> the sponsor of today's video, HelloFresh. It's like I never left YouTube, still got it. Now, if you've never heard of HelloFresh, they're awesome. They're an affordable plan, shop, and deliver meal kit service. They have a wide variety of step-by-step -step recipes. The fresh, pre-proportioned ingredients are brought right to your door. And I can't believe it's taken me so long to subscribe to a meal kit service because honestly, I don't like cooking, specifically, the hassle. And HelloFresh eliminates all the negatives in the equation. They literally bring everything to your door. So you get to spend less time meal planning, you get to skip grocery shopping, you literally just cook and enjoy, which makes it the perfect addition to any busy work or back to school routine. Or like if you've got a newborn child that requires all your attention all the time, HelloFresh is very useful in that scenario too. They've got a ton of recipes. There are options like low calorie or pescatarian if you want them. Healthy living has never been easier. Most importantly, the recipes aren't just healthy, they taste delicious. Super simple, all the ingredients are right there and they make it so idiot proof even I can do it. In each recipe, I feel like my cooking skills have leveled up, like I've learned to do something new. So if you're ready to save time, eat healthy, and have fun doing it, head on over to HelloFresh.com. And the best part, use the code AGRIFISH16 for up to 16 free meals 
and three surprise gifts. That's free food. 16 meals worth of free food by using the code agfree 16 at hellofresh.com. Or you can click the link in the description and it helps support the channel by letting them know that I sent you. So thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. And while you're checking that out, let's get back to your questions. Echo Mode asks, so how's being a dad? Congratulations, by the way. Yeah, thanks, man. Uh, I hated sleeping anyways. No big deal. Nah, Frida Sophia is awesome. She's already way cooler than I will ever be, and the support has been unreal. Machine Gun Kelly and a crappy Schechter goes together well, and it seems they agree because Mr. Gun might have another signature guitar on the way. Maybe more, maybe a lot more, actually. You know, because everybody's been super f***ing chill about the first one. <laughs> At least in the rock and metal world. So, quick recap. Machine Gun Kelly, rapper turned pop punker, I guess. It's actually pretty impressive what he's accomplished, starting as a white boy rapper out of Cleveland, Ohio. Personally, I find his current music, like, bland Blink-182. Like, Blink-182 minus the originality and authenticity. But I found him quite good in the Netflix Motley Crue biopic, not gonna lie. Anyways, credit where credit is due, he completely changed his musical style, which often can kill an artist's career, more often than not, actually. But he's managed to not only bring his audience with him, but also grow it through the transition, which is genuinely and objectively impressive. And he is immensely popular with the TikTok generation, one of the few current mainstream artists that puts guitar front and center, and because of that, Schechter has given him a signature model. Remember, because a lot of people forget, a lot of the time, it's not the music industry, it's the attention industry. And for better or worse, he is damn good at maintaining attention. Even though that attention has sometimes come from saying some incredibly creepy shit. There's a whole discussion to be had about the pitfalls of society rewarding attention, no matter what attention that is, but we're not gonna go there for now. Anyways, that leads us to the collaboration with Schechter, and man, I kinda hate how much I like this guitar. Just released a demo on it, it's so <laughs> pop punk, and I grew up on pop punk. I really like the neck, and the simplicity, and the color. It's kind of like a modern day version of Tom DeLonge's Strat. Same spirit, spec wise, at least. I don't think it's a thousand dollar guitar though, especially since they use the wrong size saddles on mine, and it's very unlike Schecter to make a dumb mistake like that. So while I just love playing it and ignore the artist association, a lot of people hate that MGK signature is even a thing. The reason being, yeah, he listens to rock, but he's not part of the rock scene. He doesn't embrace or embody rock culture. Go, There's no mutual respect, which is important in rock culture. And the modern day rock scene is kind of a contradiction because it's always been about breaking rules and pushing boundaries. But at the same time, there's a lot of respect for tradition and for what came before. And again, MGK is great at getting attention and acting edgy and all that, but God, Damn, his music is so f***ing safe and bland and unoriginal. In fairness, I kind of agree with some of what he's saying. Rock has very few mainstream rock stars at the moment. People that are larger than life and attract new people to the genre. But there's a huge difference between rock the genre and rock the culture. So personally, I wouldn't go around spreading my points by being a dick to the rock and metal scene. Anyways, <laughs> back to the guitar. A uh, quick little story time though. So a friend of mine was over the other day, he's not a musician, he doesn't give a shit about guitars or rock music or any of it. Not one shit. He's seen the $5,000 PRS Tremonti, it's pretty. He's seen the Les Paul Slash sign for me, cool, whatever. But he instantly recognized the MGK guitar and that's the one he got excited about. That's the one he wanted to pick up and try and play a song on. And that just really illustrates what I've been saying about this guitar. MGK is cringe, TikTok is cringe, but gatekeeping is the most cringe. I say let gateway drugs be gateway drugs. And in that spirit, it looks like Mr. Gun is getting at least one new variant of the signature. The first and most obvious one can be seen on the cover of his new album, Mainstream Sellout. It's basically the exact same guitar as the current signature, but with the colors inverted. So black with pink accents, and the pickup is now uncovered with custom pink bobbins. This is a no-brainer for Schechter. It's on the album cover of 
probably one of the best-selling rock albums of the year does it make you mad he's been using it on tour and in music videos it's already got visibility it'll sell itself now there's an even cooler variant in the emo girl music video jesus christ these song titles were written by a 15 year old in 2005 where the entire guitar has just been chromed out oh, i love it it's so clean ironically it's probably impossible to keep clean the thing is probably a fingerprint magnet, but I love it. But the most interesting one is the Schachter PT he used on Jimmy Kimmel recently. The body, the headstock, the pickup, the entire fingerboard even, it's all that chromed out mirror finish, but pink. I can't help it, I fucking love it. I'm not gonna lie, I would play the shit out of that. And lastly, there could be a prototype for another one in the Makeup Sex music video. It's a single pickup PT, again, with black hardware, this time with a metallic purple top and matching headstock. Same single uncovered humbucker with custom pink bobbins, one volume, one tone, regular PT headstock, and regular dot inlays instead of whatever double Scotland thing he's got going on in the current signature. So either this is a prototype for an updated signature or it's just a custom one-off. Either way, the dude is really taking this stripped down but loud take on the PT and running with it. Oh, and if that weren't enough, he's also getting a signature acoustic as well. At the beginning of the music video for Maybe, he's playing a black acoustic with pink accents, like the PT on the album cover. The modified headstock has really pronounced devil horns. It almost looks BC Rich-esque. And the pink acoustic circle thing also has pink devil horns because devil horns are edgy. He's like channeling the energy of the girls I went to middle school with. So Schechter's giving him the full Sinister Gates treatment. He's like their new Slash. He's getting a whole signature collection, looks like, and that is gonna piss a ton of people off. Personally, I choose to look at the positive side. Like, he is spreading rock to a whole new mainstream audience, inspiring kids and even grown-ass adults in some cases to pick up and learn the guitar. Not my preferred messenger, but say la vie. But of course that aspect, introducing a new mainstream audience to the guitar, that hinges on at least one of these being an affordable $200-ish, $400 max instrument. Because credit to him, I guess he actually plays the signature you can buy, but no one's picking up an $1,000 guitar as their first instrument. If there's no truly entry-level offering, it would be a huge missed opportunity to pick up a wave of new guitarists and a massive missed opportunity for Schechter to make a shitload of money. Anyways, what do you think of his new potential signatures? Leave your super chill thoughts about this super chill topic down below. Stay. Thoughts on Digitech dying? Yeah, okay, so if you haven't seen the fluff video where he sent basically every single pedal fanatic into a panic frenzy, there might be a rocky future for Digitech if any future at all. Basically, here's the situation. Harman Audio, which is Digitech's parent company, has completely scrubbed anything Digitech related from its website. At the same time, Digitech inventory has and continues to be very limited at all the major retailers. Nobody's really gotten a major Digitech shipment in quite some time. From my understanding, both Sweetwater and Toman are projecting incoming shipments, but they don't really know for sure. Not gonna lie to you, just in case, right after the video, I went ahead and bought a Digitech Whammy DT off Reverb because I've wanted one forever and I am not waiting around for an official announcement in case we have another 5150, 6505 price gouging situation on our hands. What's funny is that apparently a bunch of other people had the exact same idea. The Sweetwater back orders are in the hundreds already, so I know nothing. I panic bought. They could be dead, and that would be incredibly sad, or it could low-key be the best marketing play of 2022. And now it's time to hear from yet another adoring fan. It's the high praise of the week. Wanker. Ah, yes. A man who likes to be alone with his thoughts. Hey, so keep this on your radar. While Digitech may be MIA for the time being, at least Victory's doing some pretty cool stuff with pedals. They've updated their V4 line of pedal amps with built-in two notes, you know, customizable cab sim technology. Now, I've only tried the V4 Kraken, that's the metal one. It's got an all tube preamp section with an 180 watt power section and a valve response circuit designed to mimic the resonance control of a traditional tube amp. It was really impressive, actually. I used it for a couple of demos last year and I really, 
liked it. It sounded and felt kind of like a darker rocker verb. So they already had that and a V4 Duchess, which I think is supposed to be Fender-esque. Then they've gone and added three new models from the rest of their amp families. A V4 Sheriff, which is their take on a classic Marshall, a V4 Copper, AC30 style in a pedal, and a V4 Jack in parentheses of all trades, which is their all-rounder and kind of combines the strengths of the rest of their line. Pedal amps with tube preamp sections for that natural feel combined with practicality and portability aren't a new concept. Other brands have been doing it for years, but Victory's been making a name for itself because of how good the tones are. Rabia Massad is obviously a huge fan. He helped design the Kraken. Mark Tremonti loves Victory, and that dude can have any amp on the planet. So the fact that Victory He's taken these tones, put them into little packages, and integrated the Tunos technology in there. That's so cool. It's a whole line of massive sounding boutique rigs in boxes. Definitely check them out. We're reaching the end of the video, and if for whatever reason you haven't had your fix of me, in case you missed it, over the last month. I posted a little life and channel update, what's going on with me, what's going on with the channel, with the new space. We unboxed new prototypes of my V2 signature that look really, really sick. Totally not biased at all. Pastel colors and the specs are awesome for an affordable guitar. Stainless steel frets, lumen lays, custom voice pickups, roasted flame maple necks. Would love to get your feedback on those. Did a demo of Machine Gun Kelly's signature Schecter. I've talked about that a lot already this episode, but it was a ton of fun to write a Blink-182 style track for it. Then reacted to Dean's new 2022 lineup. Actually filmed that back in January and just completely forgot to edit it. Anyways, never a dull day for Dean Guitars. And in between all the lawyer drama, they actually have released a pretty solid guitar lineup. And lastly, but not leastly, uh, uploaded a demo of an affordable seven string single cut which is, of course, the best kind of 7-string. <laughs> Links to all those in the description. So that will do it for this episode of Ask Fish. Leave your thoughts on anything discussed in the comments down below. Subscribe, notification bell, all the YouTube stuff. Discord is the best place to get your questions answered. And if you want to follow me, social media is down below. It's mostly Frida and Pringle content, but uh, yeah, that's in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.